Okay, we're going to be looking at some problems from section 3-4. Um, this is going to be about rates of change. So we're going to be looking at following equations. We've got average rate of change. This was from like section 2.1. So change in y over change in x. This is going to be the function evaluated at x1 minus the function evaluated at x0. All that over x1 minus x0. So that's our first formula. And then we want the instantaneous rate of change too. And the instantaneous rate of change is going to equal the derivative at x naught say it's the limit as delta x goes to zero of change in y over change in x and then we could also say it's the limit as x1 approaches x naught of f of x1 minus f of x naught all that over x1 minus x naught So these are kind of some 2.1 ideas, one of the first things we did in the class, and we're kind of coming back and revisiting them using our derivative notation now. So uh, first example. So we got, um, we have data of the temperature on the surface of Mars. It at Martian time t. So part A, based on this, part A wants us to calculate the average rate of change from 611 to 905. from 6.11 a.m. Uh, to 9.05 a.m. And then part B wants us to describe how to find uh, the rate of change at uh, t equals 1228 p.m. And then from the table, they gave us two times. Uh, so we have time and temp. Temperatures are degrees Celsius. So they told us at 611, the temperature was negative 71.6 and again at 9.05 the temperature was negative 44.3 and the graph that they gave us looks sort of like this so it comes up goes down a little bit goes high and then turns back around and 1228 is approximately here okay so solve this uh, part A wants us to find the average rate of change from 611 to 905. So we're going to use the average rate of change equation. We're going to say it's F of 905 minus F of 611. All that over the time 905 
minus the time 611. So this will equal f of 905 is negative 44.3 minus f of 611 is negative 71, oops, 71.6. And then 905 minus 611, I need to find how many minutes is this. And then once I figure out how many minutes this range is here, then I need to figure out how many hours is that. So let's see here. Um, so 611 to 711 would be 60 minutes. To 811 would be 120 minutes. Uh, to 911 would be 180 minutes. And then we have to take away six. So 180 minus six would be 174 minutes, I think. Okay. Yep. And then 174 minutes, we divide that by 60, because there's 60 minutes in an hour. So that's 2.9 hours. So this is the equation I'm going to put in my calculator here. We're going to get negative 44.3 minus a negative is plus 71.6 divided by 2.9. And we'll say that is 9.414. And we've got to get the units right on this. Uh, let's see, the top is degrees Celsius. The bottom is in hours, so it's degrees Celsius per hour. So it's changing, uh, the average rate of change over that time period is an increase by 9.414 degrees Celsius per hour. So then we want to say how to do part B. Part B wants us to describe on the graph, describe how to come up with the instantaneous rate of change at 12.28. So what we'd do is we'd find the equation, or first of all, we'd get the tangent line and find two points that we knew the tangent line passed through. So first of all, we'd sketch the tangent line. And then find two points on the tangent line. Use those two points and formula y1 minus y0, all that over x1 minus x0 to find the slope of the tangent line. I should say right here from the sketch the tangent line at I should say t equals 12.28. So sketch the tangent line at the point you're interested in. Find two points that the tangent line crosses through. Use your slope formula to get the slope of the tangent line. And then the instantaneous rate of change. at 1228 is the slope of the tangent line you drew. Okay. So, that's our first example. Said how to find the average rate of change and then how to uh, then basically went through and said how to find how to generate the tangent line slope to find the instantaneous rate of change at a point so next example this is example two um we're gonna let a equal pi r squared 
be the area of a circle with the radius R. And then part A wants us to compare the A over DR at R equals 2 and at R equals 5. Part B wants us to say why is DA DR larger at r equals 5. So, okay, part A. Let's get an equation for dA dr. So we're going to take the derivative of the area function with respect to r. This will be 2 pi r. Pi is a uh, constant, so the only thing i got to worry about r is the variable. So take the, the derivative of r squared, so the 2 comes down, it stays r to the first power. So dA dr evaluated at r equals 2 is 2 pi times 2, which is 4 pi. And then dA dr at r equals 5. is 2 pi times 5, which is 10 pi. Okay, so second thing is that we're wanting to say here is why is this DADR larger at r equals 5? So for part b, we'll look at a circle of radius 2, and then we'll look at a bigger circle of radius 5. And let's say we start at 2 and we extend out a delta x. So we're starting at 2 and we're going to extend out a delta x. So that'll map out a ring of area. So an increase by delta x at r equals 2 will generate a increase of delta a at r equals 2 of a certain area. If we go out the same delta x on the bigger circle, since the circle is bigger, you get a much larger ring of area that's mapped out when you increase the radius by delta x. So I guess what we could say is um, DADR is larger at R equals 5 because an increase uh, by delta X of the radius at r equals 5, we'll sweep out a larger ring of area than at r equals 2. Okay, so that'll be our Part B answer. Okay, so next group of problems. We're going to look at the effect of a one-unit change. So we have this old equation that said uh, f prime of x naught is approximately f of x naught plus h minus f of x naught all that over h. And we can make this, this will approximately be the derivative if h is small. We'll say sometimes 
h equals 1 will be small enough uh, to generate an approximation. That is useful. So in this case, if we take the top equation, we could say for ca uh, cases like this, this will be approximately f of x naught plus 1 minus f of x naught. All that divided by 1, so I'm not going to put the division by 1. And then sometimes this is a, this can be helpful in certain cases for a one unit increase. So for some things, h equals 1 is not good enough. You need to get much smaller. Like maybe h equals a thousandth or a millionth. But for certain things, um, sometimes this is helpful. So let's go through and do an example or two on this. We got an example of this. We got a marginal cost example. Then we have some stuff about linear motion and a thing about gravity. And then we can uh, basically say section is pretty much wrapped up at that point. So for example, three here. Um, we're going to say for speeds s, between, sorry, it's not supposed to be that little dot there. So for speeds s between 30 and 70 miles per hour, by 30 and 75 miles per hour, um, the stopping distance of a car after the brakes are applied is given by this formula. I paraphrase. So it's given by f of s equals 1.1 s um, plus 0 0.05 s squared feet for s equals 60. So now at s equals 60, they want us to do the following things. Part A. Calculate the change in stopping distance um, if the speed is increased by one mile per hour. They want us to estimate. Uh, they want us to estimate part A. Then part B, compare with the actual stopping distance. So compare A with actual stopping distance. Okay, so it shouldn't be too bad. In part A, we're looking basically at f of 61 minus f of 60. So that right there is approximately f of 60 plus 1 minus f of 60. So that can be approximated by f prime of 60. So if f is this function up here, then f prime of x will be 1.1 plus, let's see here, it'll be 0 0.05 times 2, so that'll be plus 0.1 times s to the first power, and we evaluate that at 60. So f prime of 60 will be 1.1 plus 0 0.1 times 60. which will be 
about equal to 7.1 feet. So our estimate is um, so our estimate is uh, 7.1. Uh, sorry, it's feet per mile per hour. No, no, it would just be feet because, sorry, the derivative is feet per mile per hour. So the derivative is feet per mile per hour, but we're using it to estimate something that's just feet. So it's okay. Like this is a feet per mile per hour, but uh, we're trying to estimate something with feet. So our answer is going to be the thing we are trying to approximate, which is feet. So that's our answer to part A. Part B says compare the actual with part A and see how far off we are. We want to do f of 61 minus f of 60. So this will equal, let's see here. This will be 1.1 times 61 plus 0 0.05 times 61 squared. All that minus, same thing with 60. So let's see what the actual thing is. So we get this is about equal to, or this is actually equal to 7.15 feet. And we can see that that's close to part A. Part A is 7.71, part B is 0.715.